Coming up on this special edition of Fulton Today, the county's 2020 vision. From resident participation in the all-important census count worth millions in federal funding to that 2020 presidential election. The Fulton Voter Education Outreach Team continues the push of educating all Fulton voters on the state's new voting machines as the March 2020 presidential primary inches closer. I'm Brian Robinson and I'll explain how the team is leaving no stone unturned. And we'll take a look at senior services and Board of Health programs returning in the new year. These stories and more, including what patrons can expect when the Central Library opens, signaling the end of the Library Capital Improvement Program. All that in this special year in edition of Fulton Today. Welcome to this special edition of Fulton Today, everybody. With a presidential election and a census count, 2020 is shaping up to be a busy year for Fulton leaders, but there is so much more. And what should residents expect? Fulton County Manager Dick Anderson has a pretty good idea of what's to come. Sir, welcome back to Fulton Today. Thank you, Shania. So talk about what you see happening this year and beyond for Fulton County. Well, two big things that, that I think we should all keep in mind. Number one, we've got some major construction programs that are going to continue into 2020, principally centered on our libraries. So we've got another 12 or so libraries to open, but the penultimate opening, of course, is the Central Library, and it is going to be spectacular. We've all seen some of the drawings and taken a tour and the like, but it will not match up to what it's going to look like in the final design. And I just, I can't wait for that to happen at the middle part of this year. So look for all these libraries from Roswell to Central uh, Atlanta that will open next year and really put the capstone on our library capital program. So it's going to be a phenomenal set of accomplishments. At the same time, we begin really a revamping of our primary location at 141 prior. So the public's going to begin to see a whole new front entrance here as well as atrium and then an updating of assembly hall. So from the time that you uh, drive up to the building to the time that you enter to the time that you come into assembly hall to attend a board of commissioners meeting or a community meeting, you're going to see a whole new look and feel for this facility. Likewise, across the street at the courts where we have 600,000 visitors a year, we're undertaking a very sophisticated wayfinding or signage project. What we found was over 80% of the visitors do not know where they're going when they come for a court summons or some other business in the court system. This sophisticated wayfinding program is going to simplify with color coding and signage on the streets as well as apps on your phone how you get from point A to point B. And I think that's going to be a tremendous customer service improvement. Lastly, what uh, I want our employees to know is that we're very supportive of them because in the end, all these infrastructure projects are great, but it's the employees that deliver the service. So two or three more things that the employees can see coming in 2020. One, of course, is the expectation that we'll pay another performance uh, payout based on customer satisfaction. I have every expectation that we'll achieve our goals and we'll be able to announce that in February. Number two, the board has approved an incremental compensation strategy that we've talked about at length and it really moves what today has been uh, the majority of our employees stuck in the lowest tier of their compensation band on a more equitable fashion throughout that band. So it's going to be a great benefit to many employees and provide a path forward for all employees to see incremental compensation happening over their course of their tenure with Fulton County. And then last, we continue to fund educational uh, opportunities for our employees. So those three things together, paying for performance, effectively paying for your time here, and then paying for you to increase your skill sets are things that in the end accrue to the benefit of our citizens. Because the better our employees feel about working here, the more valued they feel, the better they serve our citizens. And that's what our intention is and our overall goal is. It will be quite a year. County Manager Dick Anderson, always great information. Let's make 2020 the best year yet. I totally agree. Well, Fulton Census 2020 Complete Count Committee continues to map out the county's plan to get every resident counted this year. Fulton leaders officially marked the 100-day countdown to the April 1st count. 
Now, the county's intergovernmental and interagency team leads the effort and has been meeting on a bi-monthly basis to discuss the best ways to ensure that every county resident is counted. In 2020, the meetings will occur on a monthly basis leading up to the April 1st census deadline. The committee's goal from day one has been finding ways to count the county's 300,000 hard to count households. Fulton County has about 154 census tracts that are considered hard to count where we have residents who don't always self respond upon invitation. And so of course, if you don't respond to the census, which is federally mandated in our constitution, then we have to send door knockers out. And we are trying to ensure that we can get about 80% of our residents. Now, Fulton leaders are asking residents to raise their hands and be counted. Census representatives say the participation of each resident will equate to roughly $1,600 for government programs and services that directly impact Georgians. The 2020 census will mark the first time people can respond online. After receiving an invitation to participate by April 1st, you will be able to respond by phone, mail, or online. With 2020 being a presidential election year, Fulton's voter education and outreach team is working to ensure a very smooth election year. First and foremost, that means making sure that every county voter is prepared to use those new voting machines. FGTV's Brian Robinson has more on this story. And Brian, I understand the team is going to be very busy in the coming months. Shania, that's right. The voter education and outreach coordinator tells me that his department's calendar is filling up on a daily basis with requests from residents, organizations, and elected officials seeking guidance on how to use the state's first new voting system in nearly 20 years. Shortly after receiving one of the state's new voting machines, Fulton's voter education and outreach team wasted no time in teaching county leaders and staff how they operate. One of the biggest things we like to talk about this time around is that the computer, the system that we're using will not be connected to the internet during the election. So therefore that uh, uh, will not allow hacking and things like that to go on that people are so concerned about they hear in the national media and in local media as well. This information session in Assembly Hall back in the fall was the first of many. Since then, the team has demonstrated the machines to county commissioners, city of Atlanta leaders, local organizations, and churches. We want to expose it, uh, the technology uh, to all of our citizens. You know, Atlanta's probably 95% inside of Fulton County. Uh, so as Fulton County goes, so does the city of Atlanta. And we want to share these resources with as many citizens as possible. The first big test will come in March when voters use the new machines for the presidential primary. Because the overall process is slightly different, demonstration requests are pouring in. They'll be making the debut around the state of Georgia, you know, during the um, presidential primary. So we want to make sure we reach as many people as possible, I mean, any communities, churches, schools, all over Fulton County, as long as the state is well. But our job is to make sure we touch um, all areas of Fulton County, make sure everybody will get the information they need on new voting machines and learn about the new voting process. The new system looks similar to the previous machine, however, there are some noticeable differences. There's still the familiar touchscreen unit, but a printer and a scanner are changing the voting process. You'll vote almost the same way by inserting a car, an access card into the ballot marking device. It, the step that's added is that there will be a, a paper ballot that will print out with your choices and then you'll scan that into the paper precinct scanner. The printout gives voters the chance to review their choices and confirm their ballot. The printout is then inserted into the scanner for the vote to be recorded. Now as the year progresses, you can expect to see more demonstrations throughout the county, including during the Georgia legislative session. If you would like more information, you can contact the Department of Registration and Elections. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Brian Robinson. All right, thank you very much, Brian. 2019 saw a branding makeover for the county and 2020 will be the year of significant renovations. One major renovation will take place in the gathering spot for Fulton County government business, Assembly Hall. Affectionately known by some as the People's House, the $3.5 million project is scheduled to begin in early 2020 and be completed by December. 
And once finished, the transformed auditorium will have updated technology, improved lighting, and a new seating area. The assembly hall renovation for Fulton County is critical. The technology in there is outdated. The seating, the carpet, et cetera, is worn. It's been there since the beginning of the building opening, which was in the late 80s, early 90s, and it's just time. The scope of the Assembly Hall project includes new finishes, new seating, new technology, along with renovations to the executive conference room. In the end, our goal is to make it more efficient, more comfortable, and safer environment for our guests, for our commissioners, for our staff. Now, during the project, the bi-monthly Board of Commissioners meetings will take place at alternate locations. And of course, you can watch those meetings live right here on FGTV. Fulton commissioners look to make a major investment in the county's justice system and will continue other services and programs popular with residents. Take a look. exciting year ahead. And still to come on this special edition of Fulton Today, Fulton commissioners forecast their work ahead for 2020. It's part of our district by district coverage next. Fulton commissioners have a clear 2020 vision on what they hope to accomplish from enhancements for the justice system and senior services to ensuring a smooth election. Here they are in their own words about the year ahead. I'm very excited about 2020. We accomplished a lot in 2019, but I'm really, really excited about 2020. Uh, several capital projects will be uh, uh, moving towards completion, uh, primarily our uh, Library facility master plan, we're well underway. Uh, the uh, animal control shelter, uh, we'll be moving uh, ahead with that. And renovations at, the, uh, at our county airport, among other things. Those are the three big ones. Happy New Year greetings from District 1. As we enter 2020, I'll be focused on the completion of the Chattahoochee Riverland study, the opening of our newly renovated libraries in District 1, and the design and build out of our new health center on North Point Parkway. Well, it's time to look ahead to 2020. Uh, certainly, we've got a lot of great plans ahead of us in Fulton County, a lot of things that are in the works. Some of the things that I'm excited and one of the biggest things I'm excited about are the upgrades and changes to our facilities. Um, a lot of our libraries have been in the stages of renovation. Those are gonna be coming online after a period of closure, including our main central library, and that's gonna be tremendously exciting to see what these things look like when they've been refaced, they're gonna look brand new. Um, our, new our government center is going through a lot of changes, and boy, those are, it's gonna be uh, very welcome to all of our citizens and employees and sort of change the way that our look and feel of our front door when in Fulton County. In 2020, I'm gonna continue my efforts at uh, trying to produce some more um, relief for homeowners from their property taxes. We're going to continue to work on homestead exemptions. We're going to try to continue to make the uh, appeals process friendlier and uh, perhaps more productive for taxpayers. In District 4, I will continue to host my guided tours of the Atlanta Beltline for seniors. And I will also continue to sponsor the Joan P. Garner Annual Walk and Health Fair in honor of the late Fulton County Commissioner Joan Garner. For 2020, I look forward to empowering our justice partners so that they may effectively provide justice. I look forward to working with our arts department and our films department so that we can expand Fulton Films. But more importantly, I'm excited about working with small businesses. I'm asking the county to give $10 million towards the development of small business. 
grant program. For 2020, we're looking to make sure that senior services are adequately funded. Uh, this is our most vulnerable population, so it's very important to make sure that they're covered. Happy New Year, Commissioners. When Fulton Today returns, learn about the strategy being implemented to end all new cases of HIV in Fulton County. Well, this new year, Fulton leaders plan to once again tackle the county's dubious distinction concerning the number of HIV and AIDS cases. Fulton County ranks sixth highest for new HIV diagnoses among all counties in the U.S. And to address this issue, one of the steps the county officials took last year was to create the Department for HIV Elimination. And this year, that department has a very specific strategy to help end all diagnoses of new cases in the county. Jeff Cheek is the director for that department. Sir, welcome back to Fulton today. Well, thank you so much for having me. Well, one of the programs your department administers is the Ryan White program. Can you tell everybody a little bit about that program and what you see happening with it for 2020? I think 2020 is going to be a very exciting year for the Department for HIV Elimination. The major program that we operate is the Ryan White Part A program, and it is um, designed to provide care and treatment to people living with HIV disease. And we do this by funding a number of organizations that provide a variety of services. So we're anticipating that between this year and 2020, we're gonna be getting an increase of about a million dollars, taking our budget up from about 27 million to about 28 million. And so we're excited that that's gonna allow us to provide some additional services. And in addition to the Ryan White program, I understand there is a new program from the federal government called Ending the Epidemic, a plan for America that is starting in 2020. Can you tell us about that and what it means for programs and services right here in the metro Atlanta sure. area? Well, the Ending the HIV Epidemic, a plan for America, is a new initiative that's um, targeted to certain communities that have a high level of new HIV cases. Basically, what the federal government determined was there are 48 counties plus the Washington, D.C. and San Juan, Puerto Rico, that together account for 50% of all new HIV cases in the United States. And so the money is targeted to those counties. Four of those counties are in Georgia, Fulton, Cobb, DeKalb, and Gwinnett. And so we'll be receiving about $9 million next year to provide different services. The whole goal of this is to try things new, to um, sort of interrupt the services that we've been providing to see if we can make a greater difference in what it is that we've been doing. And finally, Jeff, let's stay there for a second. How will ending the epidemic impact the operations of your department? So 2020 and the next five years are to be a period of growth for our department. We're looking at um, an additional $9 million. So together with the Part A program, that puts our budget at about $38 million, which is one of the top five budgets for the entire county. The $9 million that we're adding next year is more than the budgets of 21 different departments here in the county. And so we were talking about a major lift over the next year. And to be able to do that, we're gonna hire a number of new positions. And those will include project officers, program managers, some epidemiologists, but also uh, we want to hire someone who's gonna be a community engagement specialist. Well, always great work, Jeff Cheek. We will be watching for your successes this year. Thanks again for your time. Well, thank you so much. And if anybody out there needs additional information, they can go to our website, ryanwhiteatl.org. Now, we also spoke with the interim director of Fulton's Board of Health about that department's outlook for 2020. Take a look. So for 2020 for Fulton County, um, we are hoping, of course, to continue to attack the HIV epidemic that is decimating our community, but also an increased focus on just general um, chronic diseases. We still have issues with diabetes and hypertension and cardiovascular disease in this county. Um, on a larger scale, I really just want to increase patient flow. I'm not even sure how many people know we're available in all the places in Fulton County that we serve. So that's one of my biggest goals is to market the agency and make sure that our community knows what we can offer. 
The county's health team will continue to offer clinical services, environmental health services, and vital record services, just to name a few. You can check out their website to get the full list of service offerings. One of the county's fastest growing populations is eager to see what Fulton leaders allocate for the service they have come to love. Of course, we're talking about senior services. So what's on the horizon this year for the department that oversees four multi-purpose facilities and 14 neighborhood centers? Ladisa Onilagu joins us with that answer. Welcome back to Fulton today, Ladisa. Hi, Shanya, thanks for having me. All right, so 2020 is upon us. What is the vision for senior services and programming? Uh, our vision is two parts. Globally, it aligns with the county strategy of customer service. So in 2020, we intend to elevate our service delivery, which is possible because every single one of our team members in the Department of Senior Services attended the five-star training uh, on customer service. So we look forward to providing more smiles to our customers, greater response times, uh, solutions to any challenges or issues that we may face. Secondly, our uh, vision is collaboration, scale, and innovation. And this is aspirational for our team members and for partners in the county. We look forward to continuing programs that allow us to partner with agencies that support our overall mission, which is to provide and coordinate services to enhance the quality of life for seniors in Fulton County. And can you speak to any hallmark events that will continue this year? Yes, one thing that we look forward to every year is in May, and that's Older Americans Month. Uh, so there are a lot of programs that will occur through our facility-based programming, multi-purpose, neighborhood senior centers, and even adult day, where the public can come and learn more about the wonderful work that we're doing for seniors in Fulton County. There is a hallmark event uh, called Senior Summit, and that will be a culminating session uh, broadcast through Facebook Live, so anyone will be able to participate. Uh, we're also looking forward to expanding our Caregivers in the Workplace initiative, which supports employees and individuals in the community who are caregivers for seniors. And then there's a new hallmark, which is Feeding the Desert, and this will bring more awareness to individuals about senior hunger in Fulton County and provide more information on our Home Delivered Meals program. And now let's shift and talk about the new initiatives or programs underway for seniors. One initiative that started in 2019 and will continue in 2020 and is still new to our department is the Senior Surge. And it's the way that our county is surging resources into our neighborhood senior centers to improve uh, the facilities and maintenance. We started with multi-purpose and we'll continue with extra work continuing in our uh, senior center programming. Uh, another new initiative is the use of technology, and we're excited about bringing virtual reality glasses into our adult day programs, as well as uh, a point of service uh, surveying tool that our customers will be able to provide feedback in some of our multi-purpose locations. Third, there will be an online payment option for adult day programs, again, through using new technology that's become available. So we're very excited about all of the new uses of technology that we'll be able to enhance services to our seniors and our caregivers. Ladisa, always great to have you. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks again for having me. And when this special edition of Fulton Today returns, what's next for the county's libraries once all the renovation projects are complete? Well, 2020 will bring an end to the Library Capital Improvement Program. The project that began in 2018 was a two-year effort to redesign and modernize 23 of Fulton's 34 libraries and the Central Library. All of the reopened libraries now feature HVAC system improvements, new roofing, upgraded technology, improved layouts, new shelving, study rooms, ADA accessible restrooms, and so much more. The reopening of the Central Library will mark the end of the process. So what's happening after that? Once the actual renovation work is complete, we will then have the task of moving back in and hope to be reopening uh, Central Library towards the end of 2020. We're hoping around November, October timeframe we can do it. 
And that will be the completion of the library renovation project. It's really exciting. Um, we can get back to the business of, of library work. The Central Library will be really a destination location for downtown Atlanta and for people all over the world, hopefully. Um, we'll have a wonderful new uh, conven convention meeting area that we have built on the fifth floor. Uh, we'll have tons of meeting space. We'll have artist and residence space. We'll have the Best Buy Teen Center, which will be in a really cool place where people can come and learn how to do all kinds of different um, movie production, sound production, and really engage teens in the space, which is something we've had a challenge with in the past. And 2020 will also see new leadership for the Fulton County Library System after Director Gabriel Morley announced his departure. We will certainly miss him and we wish him well in his new endeavors in New Orleans. And also leaving the county in 2020 will be the South Fulton and Southwest Art Centers. Operations of both venues will be handled by the City of South Fulton in the new year. Now, despite transferring to art centers, arts and culture representatives still plan on offering a vast amount of programming to residents visiting the Abernathy Art Center, the West End Performing Arts Center, and the Aviation Community Cultural Center. We're excited to also announce that the Cultural Action Plan will be released. It will define our strategic direction for the next five years. Uh, we've had robust input into that plan, and we are also very excited to also announced that there will be pop-up celebrations all throughout the year at art centers uh, in celebration of our 40th year anniversary. And to get a full look at the 2020 arts offerings and the events, just check out the county's website. And as we wrap up this special edition of Fulton today, we invite you to connect with us online. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for up-to-date Fulton County news in 2020. And you can also watch a replay of this show or any other FGTV program anytime on our YouTube channel. But please do us a favor and subscribe. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. Thanks so much for watching. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County.